Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my recipe for my favorite, unbelievably delicious, what I call my loaded potato skins with sour cream and onion dip. They're so good. And now admittedly, I know you're thinking to yourself, odd recipe to throw in the week before Thanksgiving, and I get that. However, if you are like me, or if you know me, you know I am part spud. I love potatoes. It's my favorite vegetable, and I know so many of you feel the same way, and I truly feel like if you want to just get rid of the mashed potato for this holiday season for Thanksgiving and replace it with these, I think you'll get a standing ovation because they're that good. Or if you are keeping up with our appetizer like finger food theme, these are fantastic because you can make them ahead of time and then reheat them as soon as you need to um, you know, serve them, and you've got a beautiful potato appetizer that I know everybody will love. I've made it three times in the past two, 10 days. Three times in 10 days. That good. So let's get rolling. I already cooked my potatoes because, you know, I'm short on time and patience. So all I did was I took a few, I'm only doing four for today, which are gonna be eight, because like I said, I will eat them all and I don't have people coming over for dinner tonight. <laughs> I took four russet potatoes. Russet are really my favorite. You can also use a Yukon Gold. Rub them with a lot of, bit, a little bit of olive oil, sprinkled some salt, and poked them a few times with a sharp knife. Pop them into a 400 degree oven for an hour, and they're perfect. Let them cool, otherwise they're gonna be really hard to handle. And now we are going to cut and scoop. Now, when it comes to the scooping, you gotta be a little bit careful. You don't wanna scoop out so much that you don't have any spud left, but you wanna scoop out just enough that you get a really lovely, crispy, delicious situation. So I'm gonna show you how much I take out and then you can just kind of go from there. I leave quite a bit on the sides and quite a bit underneath. Do not throw away this mixture right here because let me tell you something, you can freeze it and add it to any soup and stew that you're making and it's phenomenal and delicious and I waste nothing. So that's just me. These are pretty small um, which is actually quite lovely. That's as much as I go because I they're still quite thin. You know, they're still scooped out quite a bit, but I don't like, I'm telling you, I'm part spud. I need that potato, you know? Um, plus it holds better. Um, but these are so good. I just cannot wait for you to eat these because you're going to be obsessed. You can also cut these into wedges if you wanted to, to really um, bring in that appetizer vibe. But then I'd eat four or five instead of a half. And then you, you know, you not have as many. But anyway, I'm just gonna continue scooping. Potatoes are all scooped out. Now we need to dress the insides because the outside, remember, I coat it with a little olive oil, plenty of salt, so they've got lovely flavor. The inside's really lonely. So we need to do a drizzle of olive oil on the inside and we need to season them with some salt and pepper. Potatoes that are under salted is one of the worst things ever. So just make sure you never let that happen, right? And now I'm just gonna flip them over, just massage them. And I'm gonna put them back into the hot oven at 400, I didn't touch it, didn't change it, nothing, for like 10 minutes or so. I want these to get really golden. Maybe it'll take a little bit longer. You know, every single oven is so different. In the meantime, we are going to work on our dip. So good. My girlfriend the other day said, I know you love potatoes, but I love a dip, so. You can have the potatoes and I will eat the, the dip on just about everything. And it's that good and it's so easy. I'm gonna go ahead and I put the bacon in a cold cast iron skillet because when you're rendering out fat and try to get a bacon really crispy, it's important to start it in a cold skillet so that you render out as much fat as possible. Popping this back in and then we get going on the dip. While the bacon is crisping up, let's make the dip. It is so easy. You need sour cream, full fat, please. Same with some mayo, full fat, Por favor. And then to it, you're going to add dehydrated onion flakes, which you buy right in the same aisle as dehydrated garlic or onion or garlic powder, or whatever. Some seasoned salt. You're going to add some black pepper. I was looking for my vinegar and I can't, I, I don't see it. Some black pepper. I like really coarse black pepper, but that's totally up to you. I like a very small splash of red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. And when I say a small splash, I mean, about a teaspoon, just to kind of cut through the richness of it all. Don't move. And then I need a, a small little dash of Worcestershire, just like that. 
And because I like things spicy and I love the heat, a little bit of hot sauce. Optional though. Not, not a lot, a little bit, not a lot. And then you're gonna stir that in and you're gonna go ahead and add some chopped chives. However many you add is completely up to you, whether you like a lot or a little. And go ahead and give this a taste. If you feel like it needs more onion, add more onion. If it feels like it needs more salt, add more salt. But I would give it 15 minutes because as it sits here, that dehydrated onion will sort of like plump right back up and that flavor will be dynamite. I just know this is perfect because, and it is divine. I'm gonna set this aside, that is so good. While that sits there, I'm going to go ahead and grate some really sharp cheddar, or you could use Kobe Jack or whatever. I like a sharp cheddar. Keep my eye on the bacon, because once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and chop it and keep chopping some more scallions, uh, not scallions, what are these called? Chives. These were in for about 15 minutes. Oh yeah, you can see the edges are really lovely and golden. Some more than others, just because the ones on the edges tend to get more color. What you don't want is for them to get really, really dry and then you're not, you don't get as much of a texture that you're looking for, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now here's what you do. You do a little bit of cheese, shred it yourself, please, a little bit, and I'm gonna show you why. Don't ask me why this works so well, but it just does. You do a little bit of cheese, then a little bacon, or a lot of bacon, whatever you want, and then you do more cheese. And for some reason, the bacon and the cheese, just like the sandwich like that, and then we do a little bit more bacon on the top. It's just so good. It's just so good. You kind of get more of like a filling, if you will. I don't know, it's just, it's the way to go, okay? Just trust me, it's the way to go. I'm gonna continue to build all of these, and then we'll put them back in the oven. Okay, they're all built. They go back into a hot oven for like 10 minutes or so. You really want that cheese to be bubbly and incredibly good. If you love a loaded potato as much as I do, which you know it's a baked potato with a fixin' sour cream, butter, cheese, bacon, this is like that, but better. It just is. Look at that, okay? just beyond and when they're hot sprinkle them with plenty of chives or you can also use scallions they really need it and i just cannot even begin to tell you how good these are you can make them in advance up until this point let them cool cover them store them in the fridge and then when you're ready to serve them all you have to do is throw them into like a 375 oven until they are nice and bubbly again my mouth is watering um I don't know if you can, you can't really tell that they're crispy. You can't really hear it, but trust me, they are. I've got my dip here and I, usually what I'll do is I will put these, once they're cooled down a bit, on the baking sheet, just like that. Boom, put them to the table. Everyone will help themselves. It's divine. I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of one just because I don't wanna bite into it because, well, let's face it, they're still bubbling. <laughs> hot, they are hot. But they are so good. That right there is like the perfect bite, if you ask me. I'm gonna cut that in half because I don't wanna bite into it. Because like I said, boiling cheese, delicious, but also painful. Because you have to do the dip. You have to do the dip. Because when I dip, we dip, we dip. Okay. Hot. Mm. Mm. So good. I cannot even deal. They are so good. I cannot deal. You have to make this recipe. If you don't make it for Thanksgiving, I don't know why you wouldn't. You have to make it sometime soon. They are the vine. Go to laurainthekitchen.com and get the written recipe. Hope you've enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Please make these. Please.